going on. Today we suit up. fellow wogs. It has come time that we must now prepare to gear ourselves up with Beltline kit. This particular stage of the gearing up process is important to me because this is a culmination of 30 years of standard hardcore nerd gadgetry. What you're about to see has come by a daily search, by my constant involvement, not only in the military, but in every facet of my life, from hacker culture, counterculture, every single adventure I've gone on, i found that this kit, above any other gear, has been most important to keep with you. So if you don't like anything else in the rest of this series, you don't agree with the wog lifestyle, the wog ethics, you will see that the truth of Wogdom, the Wog way, will come to you if you just happen to have this particular set of gear with you at all times. Don't care how you wear it, put it in a bag, you know, whatever. When you're ready to join the Wog ranks, wear it on your belt, okay? And then, you know, gradually the truth is revealed to you and you'll be able to come along with the rest of us because we know which way we're going. Now, first of all, a lot of people ask me, Sean, you know what? You were doing great and then you went all crazy and then you, uh, you, you're doing great again now. Why is that exactly? Well, in typical Wog fashion, I realized that I was somewhat unbalanced in some crazy, crazy way. So I had to find a way to bring myself back in the check. And to do that, I found out about Moldavite. And uh, these are huge chunks of it. This is a 23 gram piece and this piece here, I've got it. You can buy it on eBay. Best place to get a hold of it is on eBay. Now this is Moldavite I've wired. This stone emits a radiation. It crashed in the uh, Moldav region of Czechoslovakia about 15 million years ago. And this particular stone is radioactive, but it's not radioactive in a way that most people can, can measure. It's radioactive uh, do what the, some of the alternative sciences people say. What it does is it for some reason uh, speeds up my brain. I'm able to think clearer, faster, sharper. Your senses go crazy. If I was to say one thing that you want to get, you want to get your hands on a big a chunk of Moldavite as you can and wear it around your neck next to your skin. Now the reason what I did here is I made a pendant out of it. This is above any other piece of gear. This is what you should be wearing, okay? You want to make sure you got your Moldavite. This is a dog tag chain, right? Because I was in the military. This other little piece here, I don't like wearing wedding rings, eh? They're a, they're a pain in the ass. So what I did is I put my wife's name on here, A. Kennedy, and uh, the GPS grid coordinates for my house. And she's got one and, and and I got one so that if ever I'm, you know, dead and rotting in some alleyway somewhere, bitten in half by a spider, she'll be able to, you know, they'll, they'll mail me home. So you want to you wanna have your Moldavite. That's first and foremost. Now from there, we go into the Eagle Industries belt. Strong belt as per covered in episode number two. If you haven't seen episode number two, you're watching these out of order, go back. As you put on your belt, you got your bean bag, carabiner, prosium case, flashlight, multi-tool, your uh, knife, your lighter, and your wallet. Starting off, you got your bean bag. A bean bag, this is a, a Calder Ridge uh, glove bag that I use, but you can use basically a bag where you keep a snack for yourself. You should always have what I have found over all my time, chocolate covered coffee beans. Chocolate of any type you should have with you. Make sure it's organic chocolate you know, with no wax in it. But you want to get fair trade chocolate covered coffee beans. It's an appetite suppressant. It's an energy source and the sugar burns off in your system. You can run pretty hot when you're mowing on these, let me tell you. I stayed awake for four days. On the fifth day, I started to hallucinate. I don't recommend doing it for more than four days. A carabiner, totally useful. Make sure you get a real carabiner with that locks, one that can take a couple hundred pounds on it, okay? You're good for tying in your keys and everything else too. Okay, this is a flashlight. This is not my flashlight. This particular one is on loan. This one is on loan from Cowboy. This is a LED flashlight. And you'll notice it's been dummy corded. Paracord is part of your maintenance kit. We'll be covering that later, okay? These Xenon LED flashlights, they put out a psycho, psycho bright light. Okay, this will illuminate this entire room. As a matter of fact, watch this. Okay, this is the light from that room, okay? You can put it on me here. Okay, this can do this for like 20,000 hours. Okay, so if you're in a shit, you can turn this thing on, put it down, and you're okay. This 
this is a white light variant of that. I don't actually agree with the white lights that much. The, like I said, this one here is on loan. If I was going to get one of these, I'd get it in red light or blue light. Because at nighttime, we'll be getting into night discipline and light discipline later for how to make sure you prefer your preserve your night vision in, in the nighttime, but for right now, this is, you know, what the unit to have. You want to have it definitely dummy corded with paracord. To a quick release link, you can buy these for like $3.99 in the department store, used for keys. You pull back on it, separates. This way you don't lose your flashlight. If you lose your light source, you're really screwed. So you want to make sure you can you can detach it, give it to someone if they need it, but you want to make sure you always keep it there. And this beaner is what goes on your belt, and that's what dummy cords it to yourself. Next thing in line, I've got a SOG specialty tools case. Now, this is not the uh, SOG, this is a Leatherman, but I'll get to that in a minute. I had a SOG. SOG was a really good product but then they changed now they suck so I went with Leatherman instead the Leatherman wave is a good tool because you don't need to buy a precision instrument pocket knife you've got a lot of little sub blades that you can access from the outside this is smart somebody was thinking designed this thing okay very very useful and it's not like you're not 10 years you can take this thing out of your case pop out a knife open what you need to put it away and you still got it as a multi-tool this is a pocket knife multi-tool in one now the thing is with a pocket knife you're not using it for serious cutting though this is for precision cutting this is a utility tool okay after that you're gonna need to get a knife. A knife is essential to have with you for a variety of reasons. A knives are for cutting. People need to cut every day. Okay, think about how many things you cut on a day-to-day -day basis and you not use knives that are provided to you. What if you didn't have those knives, you'd have to provide your own. After years of studying, the best knife to have is this one here. This is a cold steel defender push dagger. Now, I've talked about this particular one before. I won't get into it. Get it at one stop knife shop. You're paying about 90 bucks for one of these. No problem. Just get a cold steel. Now, on the back, I've got a Microtech lock. And this is a, a special company out of the, just down in Oregon who makes these. It's called Tech Lock, T E K L O K, Tech Lock. That's what they make is these buckles, and these buckles are the shit. You can attach them to anything made of Kydex, and you can tie it to your webbing. The next piece here, take this here as your lighter. Now, I got a lighter from Japan called a VOV, and it's a butane lighter. This is like a $130 lighter. Um, the reason why I paid so much is because it doesn't have a filament. It's actually all butane jet, all butane jet. It's a it's a very, very hot, burns very, very bright. It, well, it doesn't burn bright, but it burns at a very high temperature. So when you're trying to light something on fire, if it's not going, you got to make sure you can, it's, not, it's also refillable, right? So. And last but not least, as essential gear, you need your wallet. Now, I've configured this wallet so that it also has what I call a time lock on it, which I'll get into later. I use an old Iron Man. You can pick these up anywhere, any department store. Make sure you can have uh, four alarms on it, okay? You're going to need an alarm for dawn, for noon, and for four o'clock in the afternoon. Those those alarms, should be you should program them into your watch. I'll explain why later. Dawn, noon, four o'clock in the afternoon, and sundown. Those are important alarms. You should open your watch. At least any watch can hold four alarms. You attach it to this wallet. Wallet. This wallet you can buy online, it's made by a company called Spec Ops. This is the best wallet made by man. Okay, you have a lot of room in here to put all of your kit. This piece here, over top, they were so smart, and this is how I usually wear it. I, you take a piece of paracord, paracord's very useful. You want to keep a lot of that around, okay? Take your paracord, goes over the top as such, you can wear it around your neck. And this is the best way to do it. That's why I have my watch mounted in reverse, so you just simply tip it up and you can see what time it is. As well, your alarms that serve as reminders go off at, again, dawn, noon, four o'clock, and at sundown. Uh, you can configure from this point. Okay, so when you're starting with the Moldavite, you'll notice that I've got the Moldavite in underneath. Now, I put the, this, this covering on it because it reacts with my skin, this dog tag chain for some reason. And some people call them a silencer. You can bring it right down so the chain doesn't make any noise for nighttime work, that kind of thing. You, you keep that next to your skin while it goes around the neck. Now, if you don't like the Moldavite as a stone, you can get you one of these little leather satchels, all little hippie shops sell them, or one of those ones that make a hemp or whatever, whatever. Natural is good, okay? So you want to go with that. Now, going around on the belt, as you suit up, you put on your belt, belt comes through. First thing you tie into is going to be uh, your bean bag then your key ring of course is going to go here and you've got your your belt comes around in the back you want to make sure you keep your prosium case your flashlight case multi-tool your knife but this knife looks a little bit scary you know what same people get a little bit disturbed about that kind of thing so what you want to do is for the non-wogs out there when you buy your leatherman it comes with a with a case that i use for your for my lighter use this as your lighter case not as a leatherman case and then you can use whatever kind of pouch you want for your leatherman but the neat thing about this case is, is it hooks right over top of the factory issue cold steel boot clasp with no trouble at all it just hooks on there she's on there now and that will not come off so if you don't want to go with a whole bunch of stuff your minimum requirements I'd say would be a lighter knife and multi-tool that's your that's your that's your minimum requirement there if you don't want to get everything else is optional but you definitely want to get that okay that's your that's your key core you, you move up from there and then uh, you you got your shirt on right you got your you're definitely your non brand brand name anything t-shirt you got your surplus pants got your socks you're geared up now we're ready for top layer Alrighty, so the time has come for me to show you the secret of my unique weight loss plan. In four months I've lost uh, 40 pounds and I believe that this particular 
solution is the reason why I was able to uh, get this program out and get my life back under control because of my particular allergies to, uh, well, preservatives. Wait a minute, Sean, what are you talking about? You eat IMPs and rations. Like, these things are loaded with preservatives and chemicals and stuff like that. There is very few things on this planet that has as many toxic chemicals in it as this does. Well, this one here is barbecue beans and frankfurters, which uh, means those frankfurters is a nice way of saying wieners, which is a nice way of saying the lips and assholes and table scraps not fit for regular humans or dogs, so it got fed to soldiers. Quite probably the meat today is the most toxic food on the planet. If you don't want to be a vegetarian, that's completely fine. But you must make sure that you cleanse yourself with these toxins. Stanley uh, Burroughs created this, this dude created it. He was a stomach, trying to find something for stomach ulcers. And he found it, he fed this to people, and some people cured diabetes, some people got rid of their cancer, because he discovered that no matter what you put into your body, okay, stays in your body. If you put in chemicals in your body, they stay in your body. I a child will tell you this, okay, it's too easy. So what you need to do is you need to make sure you cleanse your body from now and again. This is also called the boxers fast, because boxers, if they want to drop a weight class without losing muscle, they do this fast. Now, if you don't want to fast and do the fast, I'm not going to talk about the fast, but this is the drink for that fast. You can live on this drink for 40 days. 40 days. So if you don't, you've only got 20 bucks and you got to survive two weeks, you buy lemons, organic cayenne pepper, and you buy organic maple syrup. But make sure they're organic lemons. And I'll show you how to make this drink and you'll be able to survive for a month on about 20 bucks in food. But you're not hungry. You feel like you're high. You feel like you're on top of the world all the time. You got more energy. You have to drink every few hours. Otherwise, if you crash, you crash hard. And you must break your fast very carefully. You must do it with vegetables, soft, malleable stuff, all that kind of jazz. Do lots of research, check with your doctor, blah, 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 provided your doctor is not some pill popping Nazi fuck. So, moving into how to do this. We gotta take some organically grown lemons. If it doesn't say organically grown on it, then it's it's not organically grown. It's 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 free. They're born free lemons. Are they organic? No? Okay. All the tools being used here, your standard plastic juicer thingy, and this is my magic uh, measuring device. Juice your lemons up, throw the lemons in the compost, not a problem. There is nothing more important, there's nothing you should be more concerned about in the early stages of your wog development than your diet. All of your other problems, I believe, can be solved with diet. I believe most diseases can be solved with diet, barring, of course, you know, wickedly invasive, you know, man-made weapon viruses like uh, AIDS and stuff, yeah. Most naturally occurring, quote unquote, naturally occurring diseases can be cured by, uh, by watching your diet. I'm sure I'm gonna tick a lot of people off with that, but you know what, that's just what I think. I'll starve to death. Where do I get my nutrients from? What you do is you get your nutrients from maple syrup. You gotta get grade B maple syrup, and that is where you get your sugars and whatnot from. Now I'm sure there'll be all kinds of people who claim that they're sports nutritionists and all the rest of it, blah, blah, blah. It won't work, you'll die. I lived eight days on this, and every morning I drank four cups of salt water. Eight days, I'm still here. More than that, I've lost 40 pounds, I feel fantastic, and I'm in better control of my life than I ever was. I juiced about, what, six lemons there? We wound up coming out of there with 300, we've got 320 milliliters here. You take those 320 milliliters of lemon juice, straight lemon juice, pits, everything all, 320 mils, 320 mils goes into the thermos. Actually, no, before we put it in the thermos, we'll mix it really well. Take an old plastic container, that goes in there, boom, 320 mils. You take this, you will kill yourself if you try to do a fast and you use the wrong kind of maple syrup. If you have any doubt in your mind at all, you don't do the fast, you find the right maple syrup. This is organic, pure maple syrup, and this is number two. The number one maple syrup is what you put on your pancakes. Number one maple syrup is what you put on, it's sugar, essentially. This is the actual minerals and stuff that comes from the trees. And a tree sits there and you know, it sucks nutrients out of the ground. This is what feeds your muscles. This is what gives you energy. You make sure that you get the right stuff. You get the wrong stuff, you will burn out, crash and die. Also, when I say use lemon juice, I mean you buy organic lemons, you cut them and you juice them. You do not buy a concentrate. You do not buy lemon juice in a can. It must be fresh. It must be fresh. If you don't do this, it will not work. Then you take 320 mils of this stuff. I, I've taken an equal dose. We had 320 mils of lemon juice. I'm gonna take 320 mils of this maple syrup here. Well, there's 320 mils of maple syrup. Mm. If you're really, really overweight, you would use a uh, half to a one ratio. Instead of 320, you use what? Uh, 300, 160 mils. So you just cut it in half. Now, the problem with maple syrup is, is it takes a while to go get in there. So we're just gonna, well, now we'll just do it. Down into the lemon juice it goes. This here is organic cayenne pepper. I mean, cayenne pepper is an amazing, amazing thing. Cayenne pepper is used to speed up your metabolism. Metabolism. Speed. 
It's organic crack. Uh, dump this into your body. It burns like a motherfucker. You build up a tolerance to capsicum spray. So you take your you take your capsicum powder here, or your capsicum powder. <laughs> uh, cayenne pepper. Get in there, you little bastard. There we go. There we are. Good work. There's no real measurement. You do this to flavor. I've done this a lot, so I use a bunch. You take that. We're all together. We've got lemon juice, cayenne pepper, and maple syrup there. Mmm, tasty. Cap it. The whole purpose of this large jug is for mixing. Then you dump your uh, remainder of your jug in here. This thermos holds 750 mils. There we go. This will be good in this thermos for approximately, probably five days on the outside. This particular concentration, you do not drink straight. You dilute this with water. The ratio for this is two tablespoons of this solution per 10 ounces of water. You pick up one of these little containers here. I like it when it's see-through, okay? You measure how much water fits in this thing when it's filled up naturally. If you don't pre-combine it, okay, it's two tablespoons of lemon juice and two tablespoons of maple syrup per 10 ounces of water. So you measure it all out, do the math, and it works out to, at this point here with water, you make a mark on the jug so you know how much of the juice you have to put in. I take two exactly the same units. Now you must shake this up. If you don't shake it up, it will not be mixed properly. Uh, you can leave it for up to five days. I would drink it within three. You take this, you put it on that little line there, and we pour. Ah, oh, that's a little bit much, but that's okay. Can I fill up about the same amount there? Seal this back up. You can use a micro thermos for traveling with you, so you've always got it with you. You just take one of these and one container, and all you have to do is have access to water, and you have food. You take some filtered water, you have to have good water. You take your water, you fill the rest of it up with water, as such. Nice. Screw on your lid, and you are good to go. I'll show you how to continue using this drink. It's good stuff. Uh, hits the spot. You can basically supercharge like that. Hit the ground, keep running, no problem. Do this maybe, they say between 20, 10 to 12 glasses a day. Well, you maybe do six to eight a day. It's okay, you can't drink too much of the shit. If you start crashing because you got chemical imbalances or whatever, stop immediately, break the fast properly, and then carry on. My name is Sean Kennedy, and I am the fucking man. Patrolling technical specifications, file 058, top layer. Outside, okay, we're gonna go embrace the great outdoors. When we go outside now, you're gonna need, because it's cold out there, varying weather, so what you need to do is you need to make sure that you, uh, you wear the right kinds of clothing and everything that you wear on your upper torso must be two things, loose and in layers. I couldn't find a universal jacket system that I liked, so I went with two jackets. First of all, you're only gonna need three coats, okay? Okay, you're gonna have your universal field jacket system, you're gonna have your urban jacket system, and then you're gonna have your formal wear jacket system. Those are the only jackets you need. You don't need 20 jackets. For my field jacket, which is the usual jacket I wear, you get yourself a British combat smock, also called the jump smock. The reason why I like them to come in any size, and the Brits knew how to make a uniform. And these smocks are great because, well, they're essentially, what these are, is this is a judo gi. This is a piece of martial arts equipment. If you don't tighten it up, this is amongst the most comfortable clothing you can wear. It's totally non-restrictive. You have complete motion of your arms, legs, everything, while still having all the functionality of a tunic. When you wear it, you zip it up midpoint, so you've got complete movement and range in your clothing. This is the purpose for this. Now, this is a very thin fabric. It goes with the t-shirt. You understand where we get an Under Armour, right? It's all loose in layers. So now, top level, you need to make that waterproof. You, you, <laughs> eh, fuck it. You can, uh, you can, you can treat this, but uh, it's never as good as actually having Gore-Tex. You take your, Brit your smock, I'm using a British jump smock, and although it's not waterproof, you want to get a treatment that makes it waterproof. You'll have to do it a couple of times. Something like this. This is a Superpel Ultra. It's supposed to be triple concentrated, blah, blah, blah. You add this to a wash, and it's used to waterproof your garment. If you don't want to use Scotch Guard or something like that, these products have met to a good degree. So you just take it, throw it in there, good to go. Then your tunic, even though it's not designed to be Gore-Tex or waterproof, becomes waterproof. This is a uh, nighttime marine jacket. Three layers of Gore-Tex, heavy, heavy on the elbows, lots of reinforcement. This goes over top of the uh, jump smock. It also makes it look a little bit less uh, suburban or rural so that people, you know, they get a little nervous. So then you got your, this is this is your standard jacket we're covering. Now, the thing is though, is that the wife is not gonna allow you to do this. The dark one, no. Try to go into town, not gonna happen. She gets all upset, all of her little Gucci friends get mad. Oh, look at you, you're wearing army clothes. You must be trying to hurt people. 
people. Hey, you like dressing like G.I. Joe? Yeah, I get all that. But, uh, you know, these people, they, they mean well, and uh, when the rapture comes and these people are all being fed to the beast, I'll be saving their ass. But in order to get a date, you're going to need to have something fairly decent that you can wear out that says, hey, I'm still a wog, and that's fine. Flight jackets of any variety. This is a leather bomber jacket. Bomber jackets as issue. Don't get the fake bomber jackets. Get issue stuff. They're cheaper, harder to find, but they're cheaper and they're better kit. If not, don't get the actual issue stuff. If you buy Aftermite, or make sure it's exact replica with strong threads. Don't get these knockoff Bangkok ones, okay? This is like heavy, heavy cowhide. This was a gift from my buddy who came back from Bosnia. Uh, it's one of the nicest fucking jackets I've ever had. It's so sweet. You got your pens, you got your running utilities here. Got a little pocket here to keep some uh, caffeinated gum in or some, uh, oh crap, whatever you can think of to put in that pocket, you could probably put in there, throw a compass in there, whatever. Like, it's always good to have an extra little utility pouch because as you can figure, everything I teach you is going to be a baseline and from there you're going to expand on it. That's the wog way, right? So, and past that, if you're wearing dress clothes now into formal wear, I wouldn't be wearing this with this, but let's say I got to cover up big and I want to not draw attention to myself. Get yourself a nondescript dress overcoat. These coats are designed to make you look uh, sort of like, you know, it's no big deal. They just kind of blend you in. Nice neutral color, good and gray. You throw a scarf on over top with this and you're laughing. Okay, now the best scarf in the world is a simple piece of cloth like this. This is a Canadian Forces scarf. Anyone who's ever been in the Canadian Forces will tell you that this is the best piece of kit ever. When you wear a scarf with any garment of clothing, especially, you can take this and this can be as tactical or as formal as you like. You throw this around, there's a couple different ways to wear it. You can wear it around as such, like an ascot, and then you, you tuck it in. And uh, you'd have no idea what the heck I'm wearing underneath this. You know what I mean? It's like, oh yeah, there's Sean, this nice little glasses on, you know, and they don't really understand and neither will any of the, you know, the bad guys. They don't know that, you know, actuality, I look like, you know, just your gray little office work moving along. Look at me, paying all the rules. But, you know, up in the meantime, in between time, you know, this is, uh, the, the scarves are actually super warm, super functional. I mean, in the field, they come up around, you can use them. I mean, it's like having your own little security blanket, really. You know, they're really, really good stuff. And they're cheap. Canadian Forces scarves. And all this is is like an underwear terry cloth material. So anything you'd see that you wear like for long john material, that would be the best. Just get a, get a swath of it. Cut it, I'd say, oh, good size, maybe uh, 18 inches by four feet, you know, or maybe even uh, if you want to go big maybe 24 inches by four feet if you're a big guy and uh it, it's just it, they're the best piece of fabric ever you know and that's all you need that's it that's all the tough covering you, you you really have to go with uh, there's no reason to have all this other stuff so now that we're kitted up we can start looking onto other gear we can start getting the bags happening now when going outside you want to make sure that you got to have your wallet always with you you got to know where it is because it's where you keep your money your id your valuables and if you're not caught if you're caught without your papers in today's society you stand a chance of being imprisoned or recycled or destroyed or something like that so what i do is i wear it on my smock you put it between the smock and your outer rain layer so you've only got to do un one zipper to get at it if you need to get at it you put it down you can pull out your wallet it's right there it's very hard to thief from you you keep it on this is your essentials bag also called a gas bag this stays with you all the time as well we'll be covering this in the next couple episodes don't worry about that and when you lock up your house you want to make sure that you with your key system don't have 10 million keys if you don't use the keys they shouldn't be on your keychain you see these guys with a billion keys like it makes them feel important or something okay your keychain if you leave it <laughs> hang out it'll dangle dangle Angle, dangle. There's nothing more annoying on the planet. Take yourself two uh, keychain rings as such. You lock it up. You attach one to the inside on the lowest layer over to that beaner, right? Hooking in one end on the beaner as to here. Or you can sometimes you put a little quick release in there too so you can pop them off in case you're going to be using your car. But when they're not there, they sit on the inside of this pocket and then the pocket is buttoned up. This way, you do not lose your keys. Conversely, a uh, good idea is to have a tag on it that has the name and the GPS location like my wife does. She won't wear the dog tags but she'll put them on her keychain which is a pretty good way to go. And then from there, you're ready to take off into the great outdoors. I grab my dog. Make sure he's got a valid dog license because he needs his paperwork too. Come here, Range. Oh, come here. He hates this. Well, he likes going for walks, but not too big on dog tags, you know. But essentially, that's the same thing we got, you know. Uh, and of course, I locked the dog's leash inside, so I have to use my drill now to get back inside. Dude, some people think, you know, hey, that's a bit, you know, don't you think it's a bit much, Sean? Don't you think it's a bit risky to have all this stuff? Like, why do you care? Are you so paranoid? Well, it's not really a matter of being paranoid. It's a matter of just being prepared. And your retractable dog leash system, which, of course, hooks onto your essentials bag, which should be covered in the canine portion of the show. There we go. I'm not able to take my dog. My dog won't be able to get away from me. But why are we doing this? Why are we out here uh, doing the whole gig? Like, what's the point, Sean? Okay. No, man. That's not what it's about. Robert Heinlein was 
the motherfucking goo. Okay, Robert Heinlein uh, should be Emperor of the Galaxy. If I was to pick the first wog I know of, I would say that uh, if you wanted to give this to somebody, I know a lot about I know a lot about uh, kit and gear. Don't shit yourself. I'm a fucking nerd when it comes to this kind of stuff. Not only do I know what North America uses as gadgets to survive in the cold, I know what everyone around the world uses. Like, what kind of an asshole knows what the Japanese SWAT team wears for socks? Okay? Nobody needs to know that. But it's damaged, you know, and it's how I'm, I'm fucked. So whatever, let's use it to our advantage. As they say in Wogland, push with the cock you got. What I would think we should do is, uh, with the whole... Fuck, I lost my tangent. Where's that going? <laughs> push with the cock you got. Not a lot of brains. Son of a bitch. Use the knowledge that you have Right, for... the knowledge that you have. Everybody out there, they're like, I want to help rant radio. Great! Great! What do you want to do? I don't know. Okay, for those of you who want to help this series, Listen up. The whole fucking point of this is that this must be distributed for free. You must give it out to people. Well, that's not enough. No, listen, shitbird. If you were to get up every morning and do Qigong exercises in five years, supposedly you can levitate and fly and stuff, according to Japanese text. Qigong exercises consist of breathing. That's it. And people don't do it because they think it's too easy. They're like, oh, you know, well, why would you do that? That's too easy. We don't want easy. We like to suffer. Well... The thing is, is that uh, there are really easy solutions to the world's problems. We just don't want to look at them. Yeah, so uh, the Qigong exercises was a euphem euphemism for what? Qigong, breathing, easy, too easy. That's nah, gone, fuck. That's what we need is instant replay. People go, it's too easy just to, just to give out the episode, Sean. It's too easy. What's the point? Guy, you can get a CD for less than a six-pack return of bottles. You could go pick up bottles, get the money, buy CDs, and distribute the Con Sean Kennedy show if you were homeless, if you were a fan. And people go, well, why would that be a big deal? Because you'd be getting more fans. What do fans do? Fans are wogs. What do wogs do? Wogs think for themselves. What do people who think for themselves do? Well, they start going into their human nature, don't they? So it comes down to thinking that, do you believe, do you believe that human nature is good or bad? I got hope, man. I don't think we're a bunch of fuck-ups. Because if we were, if we were really that hell-bent on destruction, we would have done it 40 years ago with the fucking Nazis. We all went, ah, fuck yeah, it'll be great, let's kill some Jews. No, nobody wanted to do that. Who, do you know any Jews? I don't know a single fucking Jew, but I don't want any of them to die. I don't know any Jews. I don't know one Jew. Not one. No, no, not one Jew. But I'm sure they're really nice people. I mean, I've seen a lot of them play it on TV. Billy Crystal, you know, he hosts the Grammys. No Jews, no Billy Crystal. The thing is, that if people think for themselves, the world will be a better place. You turn on the news, they try to keep you so terrified, man. They, oh yeah, we tell them the truth. Yeah, but it's how you tell them. We're telling people the truth about what's going on in the world. You have a right to know. You have a right to be scared out of your fucking mind. When was the last time the news taught you anything? When did you learn something? Fuck that. When was the last time you learned anything? When was the last time you learned a new skill? High school? When is it, do you know how to use a map? It's fun to learn new skills. To acquire data. The process of meat download. Teaching. Vital. Unless we do that, and with teaching, we get away from... The computer is a wonderful planning tool. Brilliant. I do not belittle the computer. The computer can answer all of our technological needs. Great. Well, they're not in rooms anymore. Great. They're not on desks anymore. Now they're in laptops and on your back. So why don't you take them back outside? Let's turn the computer into something that people can take out into the middle of nowhere. We got solar power rechargers now. You have a database that's open to you. You could take a person with enough computer programs and data, like um, we're talking terabytes here, you could take a person into the middle of the forest in an isolated non-corporate environment, raise them from the ground up with an Oxford degree education as an engineer in the middle of fucking nowhere. You don't need to worry about all the reasons why we had cities. We don't need cities anymore. They're obsolete. Why are they there? Oh, because that's where everyone goes to get a job. Great. Can you get jobs in rural communities? Yeah. Then what would happen to the rural communities? Oh, then then get bigger. Yeah, they would, and then there'd be other rural communities that would open, and we, we have to f stop focusing on cities. We have to spread out. If you live in the city right now, like if you're an inner city motherfucker, ask yourself this question. When was it? Oh, okay, there's two questions you need to ask. One, can I walk to a park that I could get lost in from where I live right now? Okay, if the answer to that question is no, you need to move. You need to get out of where you live as soon as you can. As soon as you are possibly able to, you need to get out of there, get to an area where you can walk somewhere where you could actually get lost. Like, lost for real. Like, get lost and die in the wilderness. If the next question after that is, is, can I remember the last time I stood on grass? Have I stood on grass within the last month or so? Meaning, if you can remember when you were six and you took a trip and you stood on grass, it's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about if it's more than a month since you stood on grass, you need to run from the city. You have to get out of there as soon as you can. Get out of the city. Why? Well, because humans are not supposed to live in the urban environment. They're supposed to live in the wilderness. We're natural creatures. This is our home. This is Earth. It's 
teeming with life. That's part one. Part two is that when you put a bunch of stuff together that's not alive, what does it do? It rots. And when things rot, they cause diseases sometimes. And nature will create diseases inside of them that, uh, inside of like a pile of shit that, you like rotting meat and stuff like that. Like Komodo dragons, they, they got like 18 different terminal diseases in the rotting meat they stuff in their mouth. That's what Komodo dragons, that's how they kill you. They think they're venomous, they're actually not. They, what it is is they get these meat in there and it creates these diseases, right? Well, that's what's happening in these cities is all this meat there and it's rotting and they're in, like in the mouth of the dragon, you know? And uh, the diseases are starting to spread. Now they're turning into real diseases. They got these, I, I don't know where these diseases come from, you know what I mean? But there's lots of fucking airborne flus and, and other diseases and it's sick. You know, it's unhealthy. You're gonna get sick and die. Well, I can't leave, I can't move into the country. Why not? I don't know anything about the country. Guess you're gonna learn damn quick or you're gonna die in the city. You can take this as a put up or shut up for all the wogs out there. You gonna do this? Good, do it. You gonna pose and sit back and watch? Great. Distribute them and give it to other people who'll do it. There are no more victims. We gotta keep moving forwards. Oh, and in, in case you're wondering, uh, my name is John Kennedy and I am the fucking man. So you say you gotta know why the world goes around And you can't find the truth in the things you've found And you're scared shitless cause evil abounds Come join us Well I heard you were looking for a place to fit in